Hey everybody, Charlie and R2 here, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Last episode, we uh, found out what happened to our gun. Apparently we sold it at the pawn shop. We don't know who they sold it to, but we need to track that down. And we managed to get some ammonia so that we can cover the stench of this body here and do an autopsy, a field autopsy. So let's go ahead and equip our ammonia. Ampule of ammonia. Use it to treat fainting spells. How do we use it? Um, I don't know. We've got the ammonia. How do we? There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse. You crack okay, open we used the it. ammonia ampoule and breathe in. The odor of death is still stronger. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your eyes squinting, you stand in it. All right. It's a puzzle. What's hanging in front of you is a puzzle of decaying flesh tattoos and tendons it's also the most solid piece of evidence we have the body itself let's check it out this delicate machine ready for picking instinctively you crack your fingers do my fingers always do that they do after seven days yes we are deep in decomposition here oh we're not talking about my fingers step closer the man before you is naked but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots his skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Let's start with the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. It's a ceramic armor. Delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. Exactly. Continue. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? This is the armor he was stripped of. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Ah, oh, that's a good band. Sabaton. Oh, the lieutenant uses a mnemotechnique A6. That's not just any notebook. It's a classic. Tell me more about the armor. It's clearly some manner of super armor. Or future armor? Super future armor? I'm useless. No, super future armor. I like that. Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500 VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Material's out of place here. It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary has deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much is it? For a full set, about four years of wages. Woof, okay. For the northwest region of Revachol, an officer's average yearly income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rank. No, we're not we're not gonna scavenge his boots. I mean that would be nice to get some money to pay for a room. Uh, that's a lot, I take it. As a wage it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. Where's the rest of it? Scavenged by the locals? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. Fair enough. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. True. Maybe he was just wearing these boots and there's no rest of the armor. No, he's got the rest. Understood? The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Ageless, 
and synthetic. So I'm going to ask how he could afford this, but I'm sure he wore it as part of his guard um, contract or whatever. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. Mr. Gart implied he was security personnel for the Harbour Company. This confirms my own assumptions. He was looking advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Pull the boot off. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. I'm guessing he's gonna fall. Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off. Brutal! Let go of the boot. What's wrong with you, asshole? Why is he letting Goku know? I don't know, baby. I don't know why he's such a. Officer, if I may ask, what were you trying to achieve by putting on the deceased foot? Can I not answer it? All right, we're going to try to pull it off, but we're going to look at the rest of the corpse first. Back off. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Inspect a belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Okay. This is a steel reinforced cargo lashing belt. Big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six rotor airships. Don't ask me how I know this, but this is a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. Apparently this is the reinforced kind for air transport. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. We're assuming dock workers did it. I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? It's believably Monday. 70% of the cases I get are just filling in the blanks on the initial report. This belt worries me. They wanted him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel wiring. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. How'd they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Okay. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the thing. Yeah, it goes downward. Back off. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt. Look at the Limbs tattoos. Limp. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. Around his heart. Blue lines intersect a small white star. Is this a national pattern? Of no nation that I know of. If anything, it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century. Men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship. But which one? I see no trace of a humanoid figure. We're clearly missing something. I agree. A sudden ring fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Let him work. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? Continue. An instant color camera. He produces two metal-capped ampules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then... A sound. A shrill flash 
followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. Okay. In case we need it. On it, a color perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. Cool machine. Yes. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. There is only one ampoule left. What do we need this Use photo it for? Wisely. It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Can I have it? Sure. Just don't lose it. Continue. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Okay. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Well, we'll try this check for 28%. Tell me who you are, dead man. The corpse is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Agreed. Who is he? He is male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. Back off. The corpse looks right through you as you distance yourself from its stench. Squint. Eyes like a shark. Squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? I feel like he's probably been killed before he was put up here. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. His face and hands are pink, thighs too. I see it. His neck too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. Relax your eyes. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. Continue. So what do you think? I think it was upright after death. His hands, feet, and neck are discolored. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spot. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. I think he's upright after death. His hands, feet, and neck are discolored. Agreed. Especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports her hanging. Could it still be he was moved after death? There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. Something's coming out of him. The pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. Continue. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. Continue. The fuck he's saying? Talking about shit. Maybe he went to the toilet sometime before death. Maybe. Alright, back off, catch your breath. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. Let's get him down. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. We've been thorough. Let's get him down. Mm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters. 
but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. Continue. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. Continue. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. Hmm. Could we saw the branch? Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. Harbor help? I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Fair enough. I would really prefer if there was another way. These people might have an agenda. Yeah, let's reconsider. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. Can someone else do it? Someone else? You mean like the police? Yeah, you've got a point there. Sadly, yes. The whole RCM is out there right now, doing the exact same thing we are. Are we in a rush to help them? Not with this on our hands. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. All right, well, I'm really considering pulling on that boot and just pulling his head off, as brutal as that sounds. But we'll see next episode if that's what we do or not. Uh, please consider a like, comment, or a subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.